You know, John Wooden, the great basketball coach at UCLA, once said, if I am through learning, I am through. The events of the past few days have made me try to read, try to learn, try to be better about understanding our country and our history, where we came from, who we are, what we've gone through. There is a point to what I'm about to say, so hang on and just follow me. After the Civil War, there was a labor shortage in the South because slavery was ended. Plantation owners in the South recruited Italians to come to the United States and work as farm workers. So what happened? Italians became despised in the South and they were the victims of unbelievable violence. As an example, one of the largest mass lynchings in American history was in New Orleans in 1891. 19 Italians who were thought to have assassinated the police chief and were arrested and held in the parish prison. Six were acquitted and three had mistrials. The next day, a mob stormed the prison and killed 11 of those Italians, none of whom had been convicted and some of whom had not even been tried yet. Afterward, the police arrested hundreds of Italian immigrants on the false claim that they were all criminals. A guy named John Parker helped organize the lynch mob, and in 1911, he was elected as governor of Louisiana. Nice, right? He described Italians as, and I quote, just a little worse than the Negro, being, if anything, filthier in their habits, lawlessness and treacherous. You know who else he felt was worse than the Negro? Jews. This was America only 100 years ago. In Louisiana, three Italian-American shopkeepers were lynched because they had treated blacks in their shops the same as whites. A mob of Southern whites hung the five Italian-Americans, the three shopkeepers, and the two innocent bystanders because they were also Italian. Anti-Italianism was part of the anti-immigrant, anti-Catholic ideology of the revived KKK after 1915. Anti-immigrant, remember that term. You see, most of the U.S. was Protestant back then, so Jews and Italians were seen as threats to the white Protestant way of life. Here's my point to all of this. First of all, what I just explained was happening in the United States of America to Italians only 100 years ago. This wasn't Europe or Russia or some other country. This was happening in America when my grandparents were alive. This isn't ancient history. It's just not that long ago. But, and here's the big point, the Italians and Jews were able to eventually settle safely in America and begin to live like any other normal person. Why? Because they look white. They can walk down a street and blend in. My grandmother had no stories about Italians being lynched in the 1950s. My grandmother had no stories about Italians having to use a different water fountain or different bathrooms than everyone else. My grandmother had no stories of Italians protesting peacefully and being murdered, beaten, and attacked by dogs in the 1960s. My grandmother had no stories about Italians being stopped from entering public universities in the early 1970s by the governor of the state. I guess what I'm trying to say is that whether you want to believe this or not, America has been a rough place over its history for many different cultures. America has not been perfect by any stretch. In fact, far from it. But there is one group of people who seem to have taken the brunt of the most hate and crime and injustice by far. Since they were first brought to America against their will almost 400 years ago, the black person. Look, have things changed in America over time? Of course. Have things gotten better? Yeah in little increments over time, but do we need much more change and more understanding in America? You're damn straight, we do. And we need it now. And we need it once and for all. We keep repeating the past in this country because we either keep forgetting it or we don't want to believe what happened. He who forgets the past is condemned to repeat it. And we keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Listen up, people. 
read, learn, understand, do something to help. Each one of us can make a difference if we truly love America. Stop being afraid of people who don't look like you or think like you. Stop fighting diversity. Embrace it for once and for all. Each one of us is a link in the giant chain that is America. And if one of those links is weak or wrong, the entire chain, the entire country is in danger. Stand for what's right. And if you don't know what's right, then you're the weak link. God bless America. Now let's make her even better.